Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 6 through 7, I believe. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. Verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. So what does that mean there? So if Jesus Christ loves you, he is going to what? Discipline you, right? And scourgeth every son, and I believe daughter as well, whom he receiveth. So he disciplines and I believe scourgeth is... I believe that is when someone whips you. So to be scorched, I believe, yeah, I think that is when someone whips you. So I guess in this context, scourgeth mean punish, right? I think so. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. He disciplines you, right? and punishes every son whom he receiveth. So let's say you choose to accept Jesus Christ in your life. And let's say you choose to go back into sin. Okay. I think some people see bad things that happen to them as bad. And you may say to me, what do you mean by that, Kevin? Look now, I believe there is heaven and hell, right? Do Jesus Christ want us to go to hell? Okay, do a responsible parent want you to fall off a cliff? No, right? So if a responsible parent seeing you, see you go close to a cliff, what is that parent going to do? Stop you, right? Why? Because that parent is mean? Why? That parent is rude and won't let you live your life the way you want to? Hey, that parent loves you. That parent don't want you to destroy yourself, so I believe that parent wants you to change your path. So what would a responsible parent do to you? I believe punish you. I believe that parent will discipline you. How can I call myself a responsible parent if I don't, and I don't have any children, if I don't, Discipline my child if I see that child going the wrong way. How can I say I love that child if I see danger ahead and allow that child to do whatever they want? How can I say I love that child? Verse 7. If ye endure chastening, so if you endure discipline, God dealeth with you as with sons or daughters as well, I believe. So if God is disciplining you, what? He is dealing with you as a father, right? For what son is he whom the father chaseth not. So I believe there in this translation here, 
all children are disciplined by their fathers. But if you go back to the King James Version, for what son is he whom the father chaseth not? So, so how can I, I believe that is saying, how can you be my son and I won't discipline you? I believe that is what it is trying to say there. Now, you may be lukewarm. You may be, there may be a time when you are living for God. And there may be a time when you aren't. And you may alternate often in between the two or with the, with the two. Okay. If you are headed to hell, don't you want God to stop you? Like, even if you lose your job, huh? Even if you lose your money, even if you lose friends or whatever else, if you avoid hell, isn't it worth it? Don't you want God to discipline you in order for you to, if, if, if God disciplining you will get you back on the right track and miss hell, isn't it worth it? Myself, I give God permission to quickly do something if I ever go back to sin, like I don't even want to enjoy sin for a second. I want him to quickly do something to place me back on the right track. Look now, what in this world is worth hell? Sex? So are you willing to burn in hell because of a woman or women or men? What in this world is worth hell? Money? A job? Friends? Are you willing to sacrifice your life for temporary stuff? Come on now. You may be going through a hard time. Look now. I believe while we are on this earth, we have to become more like Jesus Christ. So I think one of the ways God changes us is through hard times, problems, and stuff like that. So if I have pride, if I have anger, if I am a selfish so-called men of God, I believe I am going to go through stuff to what? To purge that mess out of me, right? Is God prideful? Is God a God of like, like in prideful, angry person? No. So how can I say I am of God, but hold those attributes? Something needs to be purged out of me, right? And I believe tests or being tried, if I am saying that correctly, I believe that is for me to help me. You may be trying to run away from something 
that is going to help you purge out bad attributes. Man, I am telling you. And you can run away, but I believe for everyone that tries to run away, wherever you run away to, yes, you may run away from enemy one, but your enemy two may be similar to enemy one. And you may be able, yeah, you may be able to run away from enemy one, you may be able to run away from enemy two, three, four, ten, twenty, 10, 20, but I believe the next and the next will be similar in nature until you learn your lesson. I am telling you. So I think if you are being tested, if you are being trialed, if I am saying that right, I think the quickest and best thing to do is to go through it. Yes, pray. Yes, fast. Yes, read the Bible. Yes, fight in a spiritual way. But I believe if you try to escape it as in trying to run away from your test, I think it is only going to follow you. Or unless you want to be the type of person that go back into sin, then come back to God, then go back into sin, then go back like a revolving door. You don't have to be that way. Stop that. Let me stop here. So going through bad times, I guess in some cases is not bad. Some people may say I am a patient person, but I need more patience as well. Well, how did I become a patient person? By myself? No, I went through so much stuff. I went through so much. And I go through some things now, but I learned it is better to endure it than trying to run away from it. I believe we all need to grow. If you are going through problems and you want to serve God, that is probably the place you need to grow. You probably need to stay there to grow. Okay, let me stop here. God bless you.